player, which is just unreal impact. That guy didn't even play. So suddenly having to deal with him out of nowhere, somebody that they're calling, what, the third best or fourth best player in college football? Uh, uh, on the ESPN list. Gosh, was I think it was fourth. Yeah, I think it was fourth as well. I think it was fourth. Yeah, because it went Caleb Williams, Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr., Harold Perkins, right? So there you go. Getting that guy all of a sudden, uh, when you look at the difference in last year, it's probably the biggest single difference. What I think for Perkins too, Jake, is I feel like, and this is probably not accurate because I think we just remember the bad beats more than the good ones. But I feel like there's been a streak at LSU where we've seen maybe a phenom burst onto the scene mm -hmm. and the development kind of maybe not follow up with the hype the next year. Completely fair. And it's not that I need Harold Perkins to be way better, but I just need him um, not to be way better, but to be as good, right? If he's as good, True. that's good, right? Uh, but you but, expect him to go up. Yes, I would expect him that. But he was so good last year. It's like, you know, can, how much can you prove? We'll see. But I would be really disappointed if you see that step back, because to me, that's actually arguably what Brian Kelly is bringing to bear more than anything, is he's yeah. so process-oriented that, in theory, his process should avoid, naturally, like the player getting the big head, maybe avoiding doing the things that got them there. Yeah. Like, if anybody in this new system, the Kelly process should help the, the fall-off that we've seen from some of these other phenoms recently. And also, this is his first offseason in the weight room. Remember, yeah. he wasn't an early enrollee, so he was getting here in the summertime, had about six to eight weeks to try to change his body, and then the season starts. Once the season starts, it's all about maintenance and maintaining yeah. what you built up. You're not gaining anything. Well, now he's been here for a off-season program. He's been here for a spring. He's been here for a true summer workout. So I'm looking forward to like seeing like how much his body has changed as well taking on blocks, taking on the run game portion yep. of this as well, not just getting after the quarterback. Sure. And so it's even more amazing because the other freshmen that helped you last year, they were here in the spring. And so they had a five-month head start on you. Well, now you have an off-season. So I fully expect, as good as it was a year ago, it to be – better and and not by just a little bit to you like I, I think he's somebody that can he, he can improve in the run game and now like if you're out there as an edge rusher it's not just with speed because your body's changed you can change it up bull rush yeah strong arm whatever you want to do so in my opinion there's a lot of ways I can talk myself into it going up and not the other way like we have seen certainly in the past with other LSU stars that burst onto the scene and don't have that second season Want more customers? Running Boards Marketing can help you get their attention. Imagine your brand's message on a giant LED billboard truck that can't be skipped and is nearly impossible to ignore. Running Boards Marketing is the leader in effective and affordable advertising on digital mobile billboards, which are two times more effective than traditional billboards. With a 97% recall rate, you'll leave a lasting impression with your customers. Visit us online at runningboardsmarketing.com so we can drive your message to where the people are. When is a taco more than just a taco? When it's Government Taco. Voted Best Tacos three years in a row by 225 Magazine, Government Taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the Capital Area has ever seen. With creative combinations like the Magna Carrot, the Philly Buster, or the Steak of the Union. Plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had. And happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m. and all day on Thursday. Government Taco, 5621 Government Street. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Scooncha fall in the air. Fall is right around the corner, which means fall fishing is, which means it's time for you to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service in a bunch of different ways. You want a custom stair job, you can have a ton of fun out there on the water. They can do that. 
What about a spot lock trolling motor? So you stay right where you need to when casting lines or sonar that's let you see the fish under the water before you cast all of your maintenance needs as well. For 38 years, they've been at it and will continue to do so. The Sherman family, a front to back boat search. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units. Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756 98.1. Eagle 98.1 Game Day. After further review on Game Day, presented by the Grove Recovery Center. The Grove Recovery Center, recovery designed for you. After further review is heard weekday afternoons from 3 to 6 on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Now from AFR, here's Matt Moscona. We are here at Rouse's. Save $20 on your next three curbside pickup orders of $100 or more. Use the promo code SAINTS20 at checkout here at Rouse's. Be pretty uh, convenient next week for the home opener. Let's bring in Mount Moscona now. He'll be doing whiskey and wine following uh, tonight's LSU Florida State game. Scone, how you doing? Hey, guys. Doing great. Happy game day. Happy game Happy day. Happy game day. Um, Listening to your show at uh, different times this week, I sense that you have an outlandish amount of confidence in LSU's ability to win this game. So kind of walk me through the, the, the talking points on why you are so bullish on the Tigers tonight. So I don't want to be misrepresented. Um, I really think that this game is a four-quarter game, and it's a coin flip, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if Florida State made a play in the fourth quarter, quarter to win it. What I'm very bullish on, is LSU's offense. And I do believe that as much as we have talked all week about LSU's secondary and the questions there and the challenge they have against Jordan Travis and those receivers, and I'm not going to minimize that, I think well, we look at what happened yesterday with Colorado and TCU. We've got to understand that fundamentally college football has changed and you don't have to be a top 10 defense in the country to win a national championship or every game you played. Guys, Georgia last year finished 52nd in the country in pass defense. 2020 Bama finished 71st in the country in pass defense. 2019 LSU with Stingley and Fulton finished 59th in the country in pass defense. And no, that was not just teams who were down throwing late. Texas threw for 400 yards against LSU. Bama threw for 400 yards against LSU, and those were close games. So point is, you've got to be able to score. You've got to be able to answer when they score a game of runs and momentum. And I think what I am very bullish on is this LSU offense. I think they will be able to score on everybody. I think Jaden Daniels is primed for a 3,500-yard passing season. And if they need him to run for 1,000 yards, I don't think they will. But I think he will be able to run for 500-plus this year. I am very bullish on this LSU offense. Last year against Florida State, special teams were a disaster. As the season went along, they largely fixed their protection issues. They eventually fixed their coverage issues. They never fixed their return issues. That seems to have been rectified now with Aaron Anderson. How big of a role do you think he plays in tonight's game? I think he's huge. I was on the uh, the Noel cast earlier this week. That's a, it's an award-winning podcast that our, our guy Bud Elliott does. If you're familiar with the blue chip ratio, he's the guy that created that. Um, and I told him I would be very surprised if Aaron Anderson didn't touch the ball tonight in four phases. He will return a kick. He will return a punt. He will catch a pass, and he will run the football. Now, little asterisk on the run the football because a play we have seen them run is kind of what LSU used to do with Trenton Holiday. They'd bring the speedster in motion, and they'd hand him the ball in the jet sweep. Um, what we saw them do was shovel it to him in motion. So technically on the stat sheet, that would be a pass, but essentially it's an extension of the run. A push pass. He's, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's a guy they did not have a year ago. Hanny. Guys, I mean, they, they didn't have anything closely to resemble what Aaron Anderson does. He is, uh, he is a weapon that is going to have to be accounted for, and I, I think LSU fans are going to be very excited to see him tonight. The defensive additions on the line, all, all three, all three layers, all three levels of the LSU defense has made significant improvements through the transfer portal. Significant additions, I should say. Whether they improved, we'll see. Who's the most important out of that group, in your opinion? It's probably Omar Spates. Um, you know, they, LSU wasn't great at linebacker last year. In respect to Micah Baskerville, who was a, a really 
you know, physical football player and made a lot of tackles. But when you looked at that unit after Baskerville, if it were if it were Penn or, or West Weeks or whoever else they rolled out there, Mike Jones, they just didn't have anybody that looked like Omar Spates. And when you have that captain in the middle of the defense that can go be a hundred tackle guy, that allows Harold Perkins a lot more uh, freedom. I listen. I, the clearly they needed to, to bolster numbers at the defensive line, and, and they did. And if you asked me a position group, I would have told you what they did at the tackle. But one singular person that they brought in via the portal, I'm going to tell you that I think it's it's Omar Spates right in the middle of that defense. Jared Verse spent most of the first half last year, well, heck, a lot of the game in the LSU backfield. They're going to move him around a little bit, but uh, what's LSU's counter to keeping Florida State's top pass rusher out of Jaden Daniels' face? <laughs> uh, Will Campbell's a whole lot better uh, than he was in this game a year ago. I don't even think that's debatable. And on top of that, you know, Handy, when we got to watch that uh, that scrimmage in Tiger Stadium a couple of weeks ago, there was a play, and I, I'm going to answer your question by giving you an example. There was a play where the first team, it was ones on ones, so first offense, first defense. And the first team offense was right around midfield. They had a fourth and seven. And they figured, what the heck, let's go for it. You know, let's do situational ball here. And Harold Perkins came in a blitz, and Jaden Daniels made a miss and found a crease and darted for 17 yards in the first down. That's what they did a year ago in this game, Hanny. I mean, Jaden Daniels was, you know, put up 114 rushing yards, not because you know it, it was you know, designed plays. It was <laughs> when they couldn't get a play off, it was Jaden Run. I mean, if, if you remember the first play of the game a year ago, uh, LSU had a, had a giant leak on the offensive line. Daniels took off, ran for 25 yards around left end, got hit out of bounds, added another 15, just like that. One play in LSU's at the Florida State 25 yard line, right around there, 17, maybe somewhere around there. But I, how do you counter Jared Verse? J- Jaden Daniels. Will Campbell's a lot better, and Jaden Daniels will make you pay if you don't get him on the ground. Last thing um, in all of the games you watched yesterday in the Southeastern Conference, what, what one thing, one player, what whatever stood out to you? <sighs> yeah, it was all terrible games. I mean, I, I think I expected more from South Carolina, but I'll tell you. Everyone was super interested in A&M and how the thing would go with, with Jimbo and, and with Bobby Petrino. And for them to put up 52 points, look, I mean, I get it, you know, who they were playing in New Mexico. But, you know, last year in their opener, they played Sam Houston, only put up 31 on the board. So there's tougher tests to come. But I would say the jimbo Petrino thing you know, passed the, the first test anyway. Whiskey and wine immediately following LSU and Florida State tonight. Scone, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Okay, guys, see you. We'll take a break uh, here at Rouse's on uh, Burbank and Lee. This is Eagle 98.1 Game Day. Life in Louisiana is like a run-on sentence. A poem that doesn't rhyme. Life is here, now. For life's moments, big and small, always there. The right card, the right care. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Want more customers? Running Boards Marketing can help you get their attention. Imagine your brand's message on a giant LED billboard truck that can't be skipped and is nearly impossible to ignore. Running Boards Marketing is the leader in effective and affordable advertising on digital mobile billboards, which are two times more effective than traditional billboards. 
With a 97% recall rate, you'll leave a lasting impression with your customers. Visit us online at runningboardsmarketing.com so we can drive your message to where the people are. When is a taco more than just a taco? When it's Government Taco. Voted Best Tacos three years in a row by 225 Magazine, Government Taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen. With creative combinations like the Magna Carrot, the Philly Buster, or the Steak of the Union. Plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had. And happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m. and all day on Thursday. Government Taco, 5621 Government Street. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-98.1. The First South Farm Credit College Football Scoreboard. First South Farm Credit. Financing farms and land since 1916. Just two games today. One uh, is already complete. Rutgers beat Northwestern 24-7. to That's 12 straight losses for Northwestern. They lost the last 11 games last year after they won their opener. And going on right now, they're just about uh, to the half. Under four minutes to go to the half. Oregon State uh, leads San Jose State 14-3. to DJ Ungalele, late of Clemson. Now the starting quarterback for Oregon State just threw a touchdown pass. Here are uh, the results from the Southeastern Conference teams this weekend. Number 14, Utah beat Florida 24-11 to on Thursday night. Uh, very ugly performance by the Florida Gators. Missouri beat South Dakota 35-10 to on Thursday night. Yesterday, number one, Georgia beat UT Martin 48-7. to Carson Beck, uh, 294 yards and a touchdown in his debut as the Gator, the, the Bulldogs' starting quarterback. Number four, Alabama beat Middle Tennessee 56-7. to Jalen Milrow, three touchdowns passing, two touchdowns running as he is uh, taking over for Bryce Young. Number 12, Tennessee beat Virginia 49-13. to Joe Milton, a couple of touchdown passes for the Vols. Number 21, North Carolina beat South Carolina 31-17. to South Carolina did get... 353 yards from Spencer Rattler. Number 22, Ole Miss beat Mercer 73-7. to Jackson Dart threw four touchdown passes. Number 23, Texas A&M. Uh, Matt was talking about that game briefly. Beat New Mexico 52-10. to Connor Wegman threw five touchdown passes there. Kentucky beat Ball State 44-14. to It was Arkansas over Western Carolina 56-13. to K.J. Jefferson threw three touchdown passes for the Hogs. Auburn beat UMass 59-14 to in Hugh Freeze's debut. Robbie Ashford ran for three touchdowns for Auburn. Mississippi State beat Southeastern uh, Louisiana 48-7. to And Vandy beat Alabama A&M 47-13 to uh, run their record to 2-0. and And that is your college football scoreboard. We're here at Rouse's. Again, uh, save $20 on each of your next three curbside pickup orders of $100 or more. Use the promo code at checkout, Saints20. Rouse's Markets, the official market, supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Uh, we'll hear from Kurt Weiler. Uh, Posing media from Florida State when we come back. This is Eagle 98.1 Game Day. Make this summer your backyard party year with Chris's Specialty Foods. Wings, burgers, brisket, steak, and boudin, plus great Cajun side dishes. We do all the prep, and you enjoy laughing with friends and family. Chris's Specialty Foods, Millerville, New Orleans, Prairieville and Frisco. Everybody loves Chris's authentic Cajun meat. Scooch a fall in the air. Fall is right around the corner, which means fall fishing is, which means it's time for you to take your boat to the next level with front to back boat service in a bunch of different ways. You want a custom stair job, you can have a ton of fun out there on the water. They can do that. What about a spot lock trolling motor? So you stay right where you need to in cast and lines or sonar that's let you see the fish under the water before you cast all of your maintenance needs as well. For 38 years, they've been at it and will continue to do so. The Sherbert family, a front-to-back boat service. 
Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Want more customers? Morning Bart's marketing can help you get their attention. Imagine your brand's message on a giant LED billboard truck that can't be skipped and is nearly impossible to ignore. Running Boards Marketing is the leader in effective and affordable advertising on digital mobile billboards, which are two times more effective than traditional billboards. With a 97% recall rate, you'll leave a lasting impression with your customers. Visit us online at runningboardsmarketing.com so we can drive your message to where the people are. When is a taco more than just a taco? When it's Government Taco. Voted Best Tacos three years in a row by 225 Magazine, Government Taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen. With creative combinations like the Magna Carrot, the Philly Buster, or the Steak of the Union. Plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had. And happy hour every day from 3 to 6. 98.1. Eagle 98.1 Game Day. Opposing, Opposing media. media. Presented by Rev. Rev. Fiber fast internet made in Louisiana. This week we hear from Kurt Weiler from the Osceola, part of the Rivals Network. Let's go down to Tallahassee, check in on the Knowles. Kurt Weiler, good enough to join us, part of the Rivals Network there. We appreciate it. Kurt, how are you, man? I'm doing well. I am ready for this game. We've talked about it enough. We'll talk about it a little more, but I'm ready for it to happen. <laughs> That's kind of how it goes when you have a big game to anticipate all throughout the offseason. What my, my assumption on this one, Kurt, is everybody who covers LSU is going to pick LSU to win this game. Everybody who's close to Florida State or covers them is going to pick the Knowles to win this game. That's just when you have a, a really closely contested game, a lot of nervous energy. What is sort of the vibe check in Tallahassee here a couple days before the game? Uh, I mean, I think you nailed it. It's funny. One of my colleagues at the Osceola tournament, we were watching practice this morning, our last practice availability before the game. He's kind of like, so are any of us going to be the one to pick LSU or are we just going to build those expectations up? Because, I mean, it, that is how it goes in these, where I think both these teams are real good. It's going to come down to a slim margin, and we're kind of each only getting to see one team. You know, I mean, I've been incredibly impressed with this FSU team this preseason. And I think, frankly, I think, I mean, if you ask the fans, I think the fans will be a little surprised that Florida State's not favored in this game. But I think, again, that's kind of how fandom goes and how when you're paying more attention to one side, how things go. But, I mean, the vibes are high all around for sure. Yeah, so one fan base is going to be supremely disappointed on on Sunday night and have you know, national title hopes on life support after after one game. Let's talk about this Florida State team a little bit and what we know. So Jordan Travis is back. He's a six-year starter. We all understand what he is there. Aside from Jordan Travis and let's say Johnny Wilson, Keon Coleman, right? We know that that's kind of like the big three. What else, what other dynamic playmakers do we need to be aware of going into Sunday night? Uh, I mean, I would throw Trey Benson uh, in there in the backfield. He's from Mississippi. He was at Oregon. He had a very severe knee injury last year at Oregon. He was, it felt like still kind of getting going again, getting to feel like himself again in that game last year. He was not the most impactful running back. But as the season went on, he became clearly the uh, the best option there. And, I mean, he's going to lead. They're going to be trotting a few guys out there. But he's definitely, I mean, the most NFL prospect guy right now and I mean he's a guy among many of the guys you already named who came back could have gone to the NFL came back to kind of try and pursue more honestly another name that I would have been shocked to tell you coming into the preseason from from your neck of the woods Destin Hill the freshman who had the late enrollment he was originally a 2021 recruit was one of the higher rated recruits in Florida State's 2021 class but has delayed his enrollment over two years I was skeptical that a guy could just pick up football after being away from it that long but he has shocked me how good he's been on a consistent basis. I mean, I think there's a world where he is a true freshman start Sunday. Even if he doesn't, he's going to play a lot. Mm. Um, that offensive line, we've talked a lot about it here. 
that's a veteran group that's got a ton of starts under their belt. But from afar, it looks like maybe there isn't a superstar, right? Like that top round, top 60 draft pick. What is sort of the the calling card of that unit? Frankly, I would say uh, how well they fit what Florida State's looking to do. I mean, they, so much of Mike Norvell's offense is built around wanting to run counter and running varies off of counter. I mean, frankly, that, that Miami game last year, Florida State running a lot of the same play, and Miami was just not especially interested in trying to adjust to stop it. And they do that real well. I think last year they were good pass blocking, but I think having a quarterback like Jordan Travis, so, I mean, if you watch the Florida game, he had a few good sales you too, where he'll get you out of some sticky situations that really you wouldn't think a quarterback could help that. So I think there is room for improvement with the pass blocking. I think you hit the nail on the head. I think Florida State's the experience line. I think LSU's is, I mean, when you're projecting draft prospects, probably a, a, a little more touted there, even if it's maybe more, 2025 guys than 2024 but uh no i mean i think they they do that and, and frankly they're deep i mean i think it's not often it's been a long time at florida state since there were eight guys they felt good about where i mean injuries are going to happen there over the course of the year and i think they feel good both about the five they're trotting out there and what they'll be able to do but also having two or three who they think can win them games behind them kurt weiler's with us the osceola.com part of the rivals network he's on twitter at kurt m weiler that's kurt with a c um let's flip it over and talk defense Will Campbell got his sort of welcome to to college in a rude way with uh, drawing Jared Verse in his first game as a true freshman. I think that matchup has to be more competitive this year. But what about that Florida uh, Florida State defensive front as a whole? What are the expectations with that group on Sunday night? I think they're they're pretty good, especially with I mean the 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 starting four or even maybe go a little deeper than that. Kind of the the rotation of your top six or eight guys. I think they feel quite good about him. You talked about Jared Burst, and he got hurt after actually the week after the LSU game at Louisville, and he came back to a certain point, was maybe not never entirely that same player again, and that paved the path for Patrick Payton to kind of emerge, take a lot of his playing time, and he ended up being the ACC defensive rookie of the year last year. So now those two are kind of going to be starting opposite each other at defensive end, and that kind of makes for uh, quite a duo there. I think at tackle, uh, they bring Fabian Lovett back. He, I mean, statistically not the most impactful in last year's game. He got hurt actually late in the game. I think maybe on mm-hmm. the drive that LSU uh, tied the game up or almost tied the game up, if, if memory serves. He got hurt and really was never himself again, but he's had a long recovery back, but he's been really impressive at tackle this preseason. And they brought in a, a transfer in Braden Fisk from Western Michigan, who's also looked really good. I think uh, that four I feel real good about. There are a few other guys that I feel good about in that, and I think they, they have a chance to be really good. There is a couple injuries in either spots, and things get a little shakier. You, the drop-off isn't incredibly steep, but it would be noticeable. But I, they are pretty, they're in a pretty good spot going into this weekend. What is the, the, the question mark, or if there is one you know, perceived weakness defensively for Florida State right now? Um. I, there's not one that I look at as really concerning from having watched, and we've gotten to watch a bunch of full practices. That's just kind of how things roll with Mike Norvell. So we, yeah. we get an assessment of this team. I, I like especially kind of the starting 11 they're going to trot out across the board. Obviously, the, the big loss, really the only real loss on defense of note, was Jamie Robinson at safety. And they've had a few guys kind of battling there trying to step up. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, you're getting thrown into the deep end a bit. He was definitely a leader of that defense. And so if a guy like Shaheen Brown can fill that void, or if they've got a few freshmen who've looked really good, they, they might be playing some freshmen back there, which is obviously uh, in the too deep that is. And obviously that's uh, not an easy task when it gets those LSU wide receivers in your first game. Uh, I think the same could be said for linebacker, where I think you feel good about their top two or three guys. Beyond that, when they're going to have to rotate, which they will some, you're going to get some guys that, that haven't played as much college football, if, if any at all. And obviously that's uh, – that that could be something that else you could exploit for sure. Is that maybe the, I, from my perspective, Kurt, it, LSU's got a veteran quarterback and God, just so many receive so much receiving talent. That's so good. Like, is that the, the area where the Florida state secondary, the LSU receivers, where maybe the, the field tilts a little toward LSU? Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I think it, I, I, I think truthfully that is where on both sides of the ball, the game will be, decided because I think Florida State's wide receiver group and, and tight end for that matter. So them in the mix have also looked really good. So yeah, I think the case to be made, I mean, I know there's been a lot of talk about more, more deep balls for LSU's offense. It wasn't a huge part of, of Jaden Daniels's uh, game last season. If that is a bigger part, if he's able to hit some of those, 
that would go a long way. And the, the chances might be there. I don't think by any means that Florida State's got one of the five best secondaries in the country by any means. But I, I think even without a Jamie Robinson, it's a chance to be good. But I'm curious how, I mean, is LSU going to be starting two new corners who are transfer additions? And that's, I mean, the Johnny Wilson, Keon Coleman, not even counting in any other guys, is quite a tough one to punch back to go about. So I really think which secondary performs better could very well be which team wins the game. It'd be remiss if we didn't talk about special teams because that was a disaster for LSU, uh, not only in this game a year ago, but but really all season. It it was an Achilles heel that was undeniable. They think they've fixed it a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the Knolls and how they are in the third phase. Maybe we start with, with sort of a thumbnail on, on the kicking game. The kicking game is an interesting. It wasn't great for Florida State last year either. I mean, uh, they I guess they hit one or they won a two in last year's game, I want to say, the LSU game. They're, the kicker, Ryan Fitzgerald, struggled enough last year where, frankly, I think if they had a second real a second option, he would have gotten a chance. I mean, they, they kind of lost the NC State game because they were in field goal range where you could maybe settle for one and didn't feel good enough to try it because it was, oh, yeah. I mean, if you miss the field goal, you lose, and they end up losing because they throw a pick because they don't entirely trust the kicker. He has, look, has looked better this preseason. He's a, uh, He was in a battle. I mean, they brought in a, a local kid who played at uh, ETSU to really push it, and, and Ryan Fitzgerald won the job again. He has looked better, but until you see that in the game, there are definite questions over. I mean, you need to see it, him do it when it counts to really believe in him. So it, it's interesting on both sides of that for sure. Uh, re- return game coverage units. I mean, all all of that. There's uh, how, how did those uh, units look for for Florida State? So the punt returner. It looks like it's going to be Keon Coleman. I think he's listed as the starter. They're replacing Michael Pittman there, who was. Uh, not the most athletic with it, but was very consistent with catching the punt, which for Florida State from some of the past few years, Florida State fans took that for sure. But I think Keon's got a chance to be explosive back there. I mean, he's a pretty ridiculous athlete. Kick returner, I mean, you're going to probably rotate some guys through, but I mean, they've had Trey Benson, their starting running back, doing it a lot. He returned one last year against Boston College for a touchdown. So I think you have the chance there. I mean, they spend a lot of time on special teams. They spend a solid 20, probably 15, 20 minutes every practice on special teams go through a few different various phases. Lastly, if there's a, a a blueprint for Mike Norvell, I mean, a realistic, right? I mean, obviously we say it'd be great if it was a 50 burger and you beat him 50 to 10, but like realistically, what's, what's the path for Florida state? If everything goes according to how they, they'd like to control the the pace and tempo of this game. Um, I, I mean, kind of how they were on third down last year would be a big thing. They, I mean, they were in some adverse third downs and Jordan Travis really had some really nice plays to pick them up. Yep. Staying on the field will be a big thing because, yeah, I mean, you keep that LSU offense, which I think we all think is going to be really good, off the field. I think uh, you, you're testing those quarterbacks. You're seeing, I mean, in their first game with the new school where they're at. Uh, I think you're you're seeing, you obviously, I mean, Harold Perkins is kind of the, you always have to keep an eye on him type guy. I'm fascinated all the different ways LSU uses him. And if Florida State can't get him on Jaheim Bell, he's a really athletic tight end, and how he would uh, handle that matchup. And, frankly, I think uh, you're going to have to run the ball. I think they uh, – Ran the ball some, but not uh, not enough last year. I think with the run the run game and uh, without Mason Smith available, you you see how the, how, how up to stopping the run that uh, that LSU defensive line is. They'll tee it up and kick it off six thirty Central Time Sunday night in Orlando. Kurt, you're right. We've talked a ton about this game for a lot of months. It's going to be nice to actually get on the field plate and uh, have something to dissect afterwards. He's on Twitter at Kurt M Weiler. Kurt with a C. Uh, the Osceola dot com. If you want to check out the coverage there from the Florida State side this week. Kurt, we appreciate it, man. Enjoy the game Sunday. You as well, Matt. Thanks for having me again. Life in Louisiana is a song. A symphony of sound, colors, and movement. Life is here. Now. For life's moments, big and small, always there. The right card, the right care. The importance of doing this Fortified program and offering it to people down here is number one, the only real chance you're going to get to do this is when you put on a new roof or build new. And through companies like HUDCO, who's kind of leading the way in this thing, it's going to offer the customers a huge advantage in the insurance market and the price of their insurance. You know, we're not looking to we're not looking to make a fortune off fortifying. We're trying to give you a better product than our competitor yeah. at the moment. I'm trying to do something that he can. I'm trying to give you something better. So a lot of these insurance shops, you're getting a re-roof. You're only paying your deductible. 
let's sit down and talk about the Fortified and let's see what it does to your insurance premium. You're getting a steal. Yeah. You're getting a brand new roof and a Fortified certificate for your deductible, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're rocking and rolling. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Scuncha fall in the air. Fall is right around the corner, which means fall fishing is, which means it's time for you to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service in a bunch of different ways. You want a custom stair job, you can have a ton of fun out there on the water. They can do that. What about a spot lock trolling motor? So you stay right where you need to and cast some lines. Or sonar that's let you see the fish under the water before you cast all of your maintenance needs as well. For 38 years, They've been at it and will continue to do so. The Sherbert family, a front-to-back boat service. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-264. Eagle 98.1. Eagle 98.1 Game Day. Talking Tigers. Talking Tigers. Presented by TRICARE. TRICARE. For all your gas or diesel vehicles needs, take it to TRICARE. Talking Tigers. Quarterback Jaden Daniels. My mom was kind of racing everywhere, uh, you know, trying to figure out uh, the plays, you know, the game plan, and also trying to build that, that camaraderie with the guys. Uh, now I'm more at ease uh, with everything as far as, you know, the playbook, my, my teammates and everybody. Um, so I feel... 20 times better than I did last year. Tight end, Mason Taylor. Yeah, he just knows the playbook in and out. I mean, you see at practice, I forgot, maybe two days ago, I mean, he's stepping up in the pocket and throwing balls to Malik 50 yards down the field. So, I mean, he's just comfortable, and that's where we need him best. And, and I mean, it took time. I mean, the first year he did really good, but he's got um, high standards for this year, and he's going to exceed him. So. Defensive lineman, Makai Wingo. My expectation for the season, you know what I'm saying, is that everybody just come out there and give it everything they got. You know, we have a common goal in the building and we want to win a national championship, but we understand that we're going to have to take it practice by practice, week by week, game by game. Offensive lineman Will Campbell. It's night and day compared to last year. Just being used to the Coach Kelly's process, you know, all of what our expectations of our position coaches. You know, last year we didn't have to release any position coaches except the D-line, but, you know, we had all the coaches that are helping now around last year, so it's really not too many new faces right now and you know knowing what to expect out of them and what to expect out of the strength staff nutrition staff all of that stuff it makes the biggest difference in the world linebacker Greg Penn having the same coordinator this year uh, I think really helped me and some of my other teammates we have the same defense same same guys basically in the front seven kind of um, I think as a whole it really helped us continue to grow and be familiar with each other. I think that's where we taking a step this year. Quarterback Jaden Daniels. Me and Malik, we, you know, we, we built a, a better bond off the field. Uh, you know, he's like a brother to me. Uh, you know, we hang out off the field. Um, we're always around each other. So just going out there, really just building that relationship off the field, it just translates to on the field. And knowing that uh, I trust him, he trusts me, and knowing that we're on the same page of what we think and what we see. Tight end, Mason Taylor. It is a little bit more amped up, but at the end of the day, I, we got to block that out and just control what we can control and take it step by step and be where your feet are. So, I mean, we got to take it slowly. Um, not worry about what we're doing because at the end of the day, if we win every single game, we're an SEC championship and therefore, so we just got to do game by game. Defensive lineman Makai Wingo. I'll tell you, I'm, it's easier to know that he's not playing now than he goes down in the first quarter. So, 
But, you know, we have guys like Jalen Lee, Jacoby and Guillory, Jordan Jefferson that's, that's really stepped up to the plate. And I think those guys will be able to fill the void. And, you know, as, as a team, we're just going to rally around each other and, you know, try to put our best product on film. Offensive lineman Will Campbell. It's night and day compared to last year. Just being used to the Coach Kelly's process, you know, all of our, what our expectations of our position coaches. You know, last year we didn't have to release any position coaches except the D-line. But, you know, we had all the coaches that are helping now around last year. So it's really not too many new faces right now. And, you know, knowing what to expect out of them and what to expect out of the strength staff, nutrition staff, all of that stuff, it makes the biggest difference in the world. Linebacker Greg Penn. This fall camp, I can tell you they've probably been a lot more explosive than they were last year. Uh, taking a lot more shots downfield, I would say. Not just with the quick game, they're doing a lot more downfield rights, routes, longer progression routes, and uh, the O-liners look good. They have a great, I mean, they got a lot of veterans up there now that played a lot of football. So, I mean, hopefully they can put up some points this year and we'll have a great year. Quarterback Jaden Daniels. The experience together, you know, they played together last year. You know, they're buying some new transfers, but their front seven, you know, they can get out to the quarterback. They can wreak havoc going out there and really just playing that game. So, you know, we always got to be on high alert for the different pressures that they bring and their athleticism on the on the edges. If we, we don't have the pressure right, if I don't make the right calls or I don't get the ball out, taking negative plays, you know, they feast on negative plays. So once they get you in, in third or second long uh, situation, you know, they're coming after you. Defensive lineman Makai Wingo. You know, he's always been an aggressive play caller, but I would say he trusts us more, having us a second year in the system, and we've gained that trust in him with him being our coordinator for a second year. You know, last year, playing Florida State the first game of the season, there were some things we were still trying to fill out with the defense, but, you know, we got 11 guys that's fully confident right now now and I think would be great. Offensive lineman Will Campbell. You know, last year everybody kind of knew what to expect out of Harold when he got in the game and they still couldn't stop it. You know, him spying the QB and all that type of stuff. He's just a freak athlete. It didn't matter if you, you know, accounted for him or not. He was going to run you down and make you look silly. But, you know, this year him being able to move from inside the box to outside the box to rushing the passer on third down, it just throws your whole deep or your whole offense for a loop. So I think that that's going to make him even better this year. And I, I expect great things out of him just like everybody else. Quarterback Jaden Daniels. I mean, I, I wouldn't change my game, but, you know, if I have opportunities on the outside, just to take them. Um, you know, if the defense gives me opportunity, they want to play soft and give me opportunity to run, you know, I'm still going to be the same same player I am. I'm never going to change uh, just because that's something they ask me to, you know, at the end of the game. At the end of the day, the, the name of the game is, is winning. You know, we want to win. So whatever I can do to contribute to help the team win, you know, I'm going to do that. Talking Tigers. Eagle 98.1 Game Day. <laughs> Life in Louisiana is like a run-on sentence. A poem that doesn't rhyme. Life is here, now. For life's moments, big and small, always there. The right card, the right care. Hello, Samantha, dear, I hope you're feeling fine. And it won't be long until I'm with you all the time. But until then, I spend my money up right down on my last dime. Call her all in Baton Rouge. I've read it, which put me on through. Got to send my love. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Want more customers? Running Boards Marketing can help you get their attention. Imagine your brand's message on a giant LED billboard truck that can't be skipped and is nearly impossible to ignore. Running Boards Marketing is the leader in effective and affordable advertising on digital mobile billboards, which are two times more effective than traditional billboards. With a 97% recall rate, you'll leave a lasting impression with your customers. Visit us online at runningboardsmarketing.com so we can drive your message to where the people are.
When is a taco more than just a taco? When it's Government Taco. Voted Best Tacos three years in a row by 225 Magazine, Government Taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen. With creative combinations like the Magna Carrot, the Philly Buster, or the Steak of the Union. Plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had. And happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m. and all day on Thursday. Government Taco, 5621 Government Street. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-98.1. Eagle 98.1 Game Day, Keys to the B. Presented by Coors Light. Coors Light, mountain cold refreshment made to chill. And we bring you back here at Rouse's LaBerge. Countdown to kickoff, two hours and 14 minutes away from kickoff in Orlando. We bring in former LSU Tiger tight end Richard Dixon. He'll be uh, my co-host on the post game all year. Rich, good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Excited. Waiting for 6.30. Ready to go. All right, give me your keys to tonight's victory for the LSU Tigers. I think, you know, for, for both sides of the ball, it's going to control the line of scrimmage. I think if you've got Jaden Daniels who has time to make decisions, get the ball in the playmaker's hand, have a, a stable or running back to get in there and, and just be able to mix it up, it will be good for the offense. On defense, I think if you can get after the quarterback, make him one-dimensional, uh, you know, I think you get two plus sacks. You don't, you're feeling pretty good about how the way the game's going to go. Make them have to throw the ball all day long, and uh, you know, take away the run. Rich, watching the scrimmage, uh, Mason Taylor, you know, from he had a great freshman year, but now going into year two, what's the biggest difference for him? Uh, you know, you played the position, so going from year one to year two, where can he make his biggest improvements? He's going to make his biggest improvements in being an additional blocker. He's the guy that's going to be able to read the defense a lot better. He understands what he's looking for when he gets to the line of scrimmage. And he's going to be more confident in every decision they make and be able to stay in the game. It's make a big difference in the run game. What's it like after you've spent an entire camp beating on each other's uh, heads, uh, you know, your, your teammates, and you finally get to play somebody else? What are these players feeling now, you know, the anticipation of opening night? They're ready to hit somebody and talk a little bit of trash and not have to go hang out with them in the locker room after they're done with it. <laughs> good answer. Good answer. All right, you'll be with me 90 minutes past kick off, uh, past uh, the end of tonight's game, and we'll be taking a look back at LSU and Florida State. Thanks, Rich. Yes, sir. All right. Um, he'll be with me on post game following tonight's game. We'll take a break. We're going back to Orlando when we return. From Rouse's Burbank at Lee, this is Eagle 98.1 Game Day. Life in Louisiana is a song. A symphony of sound, colors, and movement. Life is here. Now. For life's moments, big and small, always there. The right card, the right care. It was a humid day, barefoot children play, looking for the summer shade. Fall in the air, fall is right around the corner, which means fall fishing is, which means it's time for you to take your boat to the next level with front to back boat service in a bunch of different ways. You want a custom stair job, you can have a ton of fun out there on the water, they can do that. What about a spot lock trolling motor so you stay right where you need to and cast some lines, or sonar that's let you see the fish under the water before you cast all of your maintenance needs as well for 38 years? They've been at it and will continue to do so. The Sherbert family, a front to back boat service. 
Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Want more customers? Running Board's marketing can help you get their attention. Imagine your brand's message on a giant LED billboard truck that can't be skipped and is nearly impossible to ignore. Running Board's marketing is the leader in effective and affordable advertising on digital mobile billboards, which are two times more effective than traditional billboards. With a 97% recall rate, you'll leave a lasting impression with your customers. Visit us on 98.1. One game day inside the stadium. Inside, inside the, the stadium. stadium. Presented by K to Z window coverings. K to Z blinds.com, where style meets functionality, both inside and out. And we go down uh, to Orlando and the voice of the Tigers, Chris Blair. Chris, good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing good, Charlie, and uh, we're just pulling up to Camping World Stadium. And uh, before we talk about this football game, I know. Both you and I, tough day yesterday. Um, woke up to the news that, that Jimmy Buffett had uh, passed away, and that was it, 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 a little recoil. Took me took me a little little bit to, to get my feet straight. Um, but uh, hey, we're gonna we're gonna enjoy this football game tonight. And I know that that Jimmy was a huge New Orleans Saints fan, and he got a love for Louisiana. So I'm pretty sure he, he's he's going for the Tigers tonight, even though. He lived in Florida. I think he's a Louisiana boy at heart. Uh, Chris, you beat me to it. Uh, you know, I was going to tell a story that the first time I met you, we spent uh, probably about 10 minutes talking about sports and the rest of the night talking about we found out we both had a, a common love of Buffett and we spent the rest of the night talking about that, uh, shows we'd been to and favorite songs and stuff like that. And uh, that, that dominated the conversation. We, we, I don't think we ever got back to football. No, we didn't, and we we met in New Orleans, how apropos. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I knew uh, you were one of the first I thought of, uh, you know, when I was thinking about what a devastating blow it was yesterday. It really, it really was. Uh, uh, we, we, we move on and, and uh, listen, we're going to have some time to talk about this, uh, later on, but we got a football game here and this one that's been highly anticipated. Uh, I know you got a chance to spend some time with Brian Kelly this week. You've been out to the practices. What are you thinking and feeling as we head into this season opener? You know, I think it. Uh, you know, it's it's one of the things that that Gordy and I talked about on Monday before the press conferences last year. We were highly impressed with the organization, the attention to detail, and you know, as I've said many times, it was almost as if they were building the plane as they were headed down the runway and putting in the last minute wiring uh, going into that opener last year. And this year, believe it or not, it was more efficient. Uh, just watching the way they, you know, everybody knew where they were supposed to be, why they were doing what they were supposed to do. And it appeared to me that the coaching staff, top to bottom, was really concentrating on making each player better, each position group better, and ultimately that makes the team better. So, you know, I hate, you know, sometimes we use the word confidence uh, a little too loosely when it comes to sporting events, but you know, I think they're confident. They know the challenge that lies ahead tonight against another team. Uh, you know, with Mike Norvell, this is not his first rodeo, and he's got returning players as well. So, uh, but but I, I like the, the the calming confidence that I've seen really. Uh, you know, going back even to the end of spring football, certainly during fall camp. Tell us what's coming up uh, as we hand the baton to Hunt Palmer and the guys uh, here for uh, Network pregame coming up uh, at the bottom of the hour. Well, it's great to have those guys back. You know, we talk about continuity all the time from the coaching staff and the players. It's nice to have some continuity on the network as well. So, Marlon and Brandon, uh, along with Hunt, they'll get things started for us. They're excited. Just texted with them on the way to the stadium. Uh, they're looking forward to getting things underway. 
Uh, Hunt, of course, will always have a chance to, to break down one of the beat writers uh, for Florida State, get a, a little inside view of, of what to expect, also visit with one of the coaching staff during the show, and you know, kind of look back to last year, Charlie, a little bit, and, and, and how the momentum has built from not only last season, but I think the springboard game in that domination of Purdue here at this very stadium uh, in the Cheez-It Bowl. So just kind of a quick recap of last year and then a breakdown of the position groups and players for this year and, and kind of see how it lines up against the Seminoles. This is a great game, marquee matchup, top 10. You know, I've said it before, I'm not big on top 10 polls or top 25 polls preseason, but, you know, if you have to do one, I think Florida State and, and, and LSU certainly deserving of a top 10 ranking. Chris, have a great call, and you guys have a safe trip back, and uh, we'll talk to you next week for the home opener. Go Tigers and stand up. All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Chris Blair, the voice of the Tigers. We're back to wrap it up here at Rouse's next Eagle 98.1 game day. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. taco more than just a taco when it's government taco voted best tacos three years in a row by 225 magazine government taco puts the most delicious spin on tacos the capital area has ever seen with creative combinations like the magna carrot the philly buster or the steak of the union plus perfect tortilla chips paired with the best salsa and queso you've ever had and happy hour every day from 3 to 6 p.m and all day on thursday government taco 5621 government street Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Scoonja fall in the air. Fall is right around the corner, which means fall fishing is, which means it's time for you to take your boat to the next level with front-to-back boat service in a bunch of different ways. You want a custom stair job, you can have a ton of fun out there on the water. They can do that. What about a spot lock trolling motor? So you stay right where you need to in casting lines or sonar that's let you see the fish under the water before you cast all of your maintenance needs as well. For 38 years, 98.1. Down to kickoff is nearing the two-hour mark. Musso, some final thoughts uh, before we turn it to the network. Uh, you mentioned big plays, Hanny. That's obviously huge. Uh, look, I think LSU is going to get their fair share. I think Florida State's going to get their fair share. But who, who can limit the the most big wide receivers from Florida State? Catch radius, physicality, going up against LSU secondary, which is you know not inexperienced, but uh, maybe at this level of play a little bit. And then third down. I mean, third down was huge. Last year in this football game, LSU feels better equipped to handle it this year. And they need to go out there and prove it. Because when you look at it, they're kind of in a similar situation. No Mason Smith and breaking into a new secondary. So how do they adjust to that and be better this year? That's huge for me. You know, if I can go back to last year, you you said third down. The the two things in the game where LSU lost the game, third down and special, special teams. teams. So I'll, you get third, third down, I'll take special teams, Aaron Anderson. Uh, yeah. if, if there's a play to be made in the punt return or kick return game that he makes, might end up being the difference in the ball game. Certainly they can't have any of the protection or coverage breakdowns that they had last year. So they get those things done, and I'll feel pretty good about their chances to win the ball game. Thanks to the folks here at Rouse's. Uh, for Casey back in the studio, for Musso and all of us here, I'm Charles Hanniger saying thank you. Good afternoon. We'll be back 
90 minutes after the end of LSU and Florida State for post game from Rouse's. This has been Eagle 98.1 Game Day.